He drops back. Throws. No! It's intercepted. Hello, boys, girls. I'm Flipper55 with Fat Finger Gaming, and welcome to Fat Finger Gaming's absurd 32 team college football playoff for 2015 season. Today is our semifinals of the national championship. Arizona has had an easy route through here, has played Navy, arguably the easiest number three seed, then played Penn State, a number seven seed, and then played in a number five seed. Now they are up against Auburn who has crushed their way into the national semifinals with the exception of having to come back and make an amazing comeback for that matter against Alabama and Iron Bowl 2. But they are here and they are ready to beat the Cinderella Arizona team and go on to the national championship. Let's see what the offense can do as they come out onto the field. Peyton Barber just smashing. Oh my God, he's gonna take it all the way on the first. Oh, down to the 35. I don't expect this is going to be a game. I expect this is gonna be more of a 44-10 kind of West Virginia game, but we'll see. We shall see. And they make the stop at the 36. 40-30, Auburn. That's lunatic score. 40-30. He actually thinks it's going to be closer than I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be a complete butt-ripping blowout. He's tackled at the 34-yard line. All right, so since Wake brought up the whole anybody who, who thinks that the co committee is shafting UNC can suck it long and hard, I'm going to have to bring up the absolute hysterical fun what-if situations in the what I wanted to put my head through the TV when they brought up something. So they're going through, because you can't really talk about anything. you got to argue about everything. So... So they start bringing up, what if, because of course, you know, it's not bad enough. It, oh, got to follow Nate Cash, just following you on Twitch. Thank you very much, Nate Cash, Join in on the Twitter talk, Twitter chat. I like Twitter talk. I like it, Twitter talk. Look at Peyton Barber just right up the middle for seven. Seven up in Auburn. You join the Twitch talk, you could sit back and enjoy me making an idiot of myself or rambling on and on. You can watch these guys ramble on and on on the Twitch talk. Doesn't matter. We still have a lot of fun. That's what we're supposed to be here for. I don't care. A resident Auburn fan, I don't care what the score is. Auburn better win. Nice. All right, so. The situation that they described is we all know Oklahoma's in the playoffs. Good. We all know... Well, sorry. It's almost for certain Oklahoma's in the playoffs. It's almost for certain that the Big Ten champion will be in the playoffs. It sh it, it, that's the way it should be. So then they brought up this one. USC beats Stanford. Florida beats Alabama. And UNC beats Clemson. Now, the good news is that, that ain't going to happen because, well, the SEC championship, stuff like that doesn't happen in the SEC championship. There are close to sometimes to upsets, but there's never a real upset in the SEC championship. You might be able to bring one up. I can't think of one. And no, I'm not talking about, you know, number three. I think it was number three. No, I think it might have been. No, it was number two Florida beating number one Alabama. That's not upset. I'm talking about a true upset. Of like, you know, top five. I'm talking about a true upset, like a Big 12 championship upset. You know, one or two, two or three losing to like somebody ranked in their teens. Or worse. Um, 
So their last drive resulted in six points. Do you think we'll see oh. the same result on this one? <laughs> Nate, Cash. Nate Cash. This is too damn funny. Okay, I got to read this one because this is... <laughs> Nate Cash says, what do you think of Oklahoma this year? How far do you think they can go? <laughs> Wake writes back. He doesn't watch the game. He just rambles about nonsense most of the time. <laughs> Oh, God, that's too funny. Um, what do I think about Oklahoma? I think Oklahoma, I, I have always said that Oklahoma was going to be the Big 12 champion uh, even after they got blown out by Texas because um, that stuff just happens to, to rivals. They'll show up and they'll blow you out. It'll happen. Even after the Texas game, I said Oklahoma's going to be Big 12 champions. I think... I like their all-around approach. I like their all-around, you know, they've got good receivers. they got good running backs. they got a good quarterback. On defense, they can actually play defense. they got a good secondary. they got a, you know, they're good up front. they got a good linebacker. I'm boarding around greatness on all these things. So, I do believe, I do believe, without a doubt, that Oklahoma can win the national championship. The reason why I said can win the national championship is because when somebody has has labeled you Choklahoma, you are Choklahoma for a damn reason. And I don't care how many generations go in and out of Oklahoma, that stink will stay with them. way they get that stink off is if they win the next five straight national championships. Sort of a joke, but not really. We'll see. Uh, I do think they match up well against Alabama. I think they match up well against anybody who's going to be in, in the in the comp, in the the national championship in the semifinals. That is. So we will see. I think it was the exact same play, and that was a great pickup too. <laughs> Wait, how will Rich do in Miami? I don't, I don't know. I really don't know. I think he's done in four years. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't know how much patience they're going to have with him. Because the whole point is, and I said this earlier, you probably weren't on it. I don't think Miami's going to get back to where they were. And if they don't, and if Miami doesn't get back to where they were, they obviously aren't going to set their standards lower. They're just going to fire them and get back. Is there any? Tries to get out of trouble, but he can't shake the defense. Yeah, Texas. Now I think about it. I mean, you know, Texas went through people, went through people. They finally did get back into the national championship and finally did get nationally relevant again. And now they aren't. So, I mean, I guess there's hope that Miami can get back to, to where they were. I mean, they're in a good recruit. I mean, the same thing with Texas. They're in a good recruiting um, bed. So, it's not like they're dead. But I don't think Rick's going to – I don't think Rick can do it. I mean, he – he can definitely recruit. And they do have – and Miami does have some talent there. Not as much talent as I thought they did. Sorry, that I thought they did after, like, you know – first couple games and then they went on to prove oh yeah yeah that's right i remember they don't have anybody <laughs> i love when teams do that peyton barber is being amazing this game wait georgia is one of the top five recruiting states and he could never get them over the top. I don't think he can do it in Miami either. I don't think he can get them over the top either. So they pick up quite a few yards on that play, Kirk. Well, that was an excellent route, and he did I think he will get them to eight, nine wins, maybe even ten wins. And the one, you know, the one thing that's going to get him fired is going to be the fact that. You know, what happens if UNC and Duke continue to have success in the ACC in that division? He's dead. He's flat out dead. Because I don't care how many division champions that UNC or Duke wins. 
everyone will always think of UNC and Duke as cupcake football and only a basketball school. And so, if you lose to them, if you lose division, if you're winning, if they're winning division titles and you're not, it'd be just like like if Kentucky won the SEC East. Like almost every coach in the SEC East would be fired. Dude and Vanderbilt would stay, but that'd be it. Everybody, everybody else, top to bottom, gone. In all honesty, do you think who who do you think will win the national championship? Wake responds, Alabama. I'm going to say hell no. I'm going to tell you right now. Here's the thing. I'm not saying Alabama is a bad team, but I am once again saying that the world has this whole sense of humor. It likes to burn. And the way it burns is that the SEC will not win a playoff game for the next, like, four or five years, which will give a lot of people a huge amount of unwarranted ammunition to talk about the SEC was never any good in the first place. Because it's already started. It's already started. Um, because last year, the two teams that would have been in the BCS championship was Alabama and Florida State. Both teams got bounced in the first round. And it already started with the whole, you know, do you see? We finally get on 11 playing field. And we, you know, it shows just how bad the, you know, the SEC can't handle it. Da, 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 da. Just go, yada, yada, yada. I, it's BS. The SEC is not as good as it used to be. It's not the old power ultimate powerhouse. It has come back. But um, but what I'm saying is just going to give more ammunition for people to talk crap like that. And that's what I think is going to happen. Not not that the SEC is, gonna, is, is bad or anything. Not that Alabama should be bounced in the first round. I'm just saying the world has an inherent ability to want to burn itself. And that's one of the ways that it's going to do it. But I will tell you right now, if Oklahoma and Alabama meet in the first round, Oklahoma will walk away the winner. I'll tell you that right now. I think Oklahoma matches up way too good against Alabama. That is, that is the first team Alabama does not want to play. And, uh, and Looks to him again, complete. And they make the stop at the 24-yard line. Wait, if Ohio State is in the Final Four, I think Alabama wins. Yeah. Hopefully Ohio State's not in the Final Four. I do not want a non-conference champion. And that's actually sort of what I was getting around to with the situation. Um, so the, the situation, I'll repeat it again because I jumped off that train. Um, the situation is Big Ten championship champion is in, whoever it is, whether it's Iowa or Michigan State. Oklahoma's in. Now we have USC beating Stanford. We have Florida beating um, Alabama, and we have UNC beating Clem Clemson. Now who gets in? And they start talking about it. And they start talking about Florida. And they start talking about the strength of schedule. The strength of schedule of Florida. The 29th strength of schedule. Now, I'm not defending Ohio State. I'm definitely not defending UNC's strength of schedule. My issue with this is they start talking about Florida having a great, you know, a, a 29th strength of schedule. And, like, using their strength of schedule as this big honking great hammer to drive themselves into the semifinals. Let me go through their great strength of schedule. Game one, New Mexico State, which they thoroughly beat. New Mexico State could, I, uh, would probably lose to a FCS team. Next game, at home again, East Carolina, a game Florida should have lost. Great strength of schedule. Their third non-conference team, 
Florida Atlantic, which once again, they could have. This one they could have lost. ECU, they should have lost. This one they could have lost. I'm not defending UNC. I'm not defending Notre Dame's strength of schedule. What I'm telling you, that's their non-conference schedule. I don't see it any different than the MAC teams that Ohio State beat. Definitely better on paper than the FCS teams that that that, that, that uh, UNC played, but let me tell you something. That non-conference schedule, I would I, it, well then Florida State, which they did lose. So, if you're using that to try to drive a hammer into the Final Four, that's dumb. That's dumb because the only thing the only thing that you can base that strength of schedule on is the fact that they play in the SEC, which is this nice little circular logic we can get back to the fact that that I can rank a whole bunch of SEC teams in, in the preseason before I see any teams on the field. I can rank all the SEC teams in the top 25, and by the end of the season, I will have a huge strength of schedule. But... I'm still saying that it's just it, it, that's just dumb. Now, if you want to say the SEC champion should be in the Final Four over a non-conference champion, I'm all for that. I am definitely all for that. He splits the uprights with the extra point. I'm definitely all for Ohio State not being in the not being in the conference in the playoffs just because once again they did not win their conference. I don't think any conference I didn't think any non-conference champion until they expanded out to like 8. I don't think any conference. In fact, actually until they can include every conference champion, I don't think there should be a non-conference champion. I'm talking I don't care if you Talking about, you know, bring the Mountain West in. You never know. Those boys could win a few games. It happens. All right. <laughs> Wait, are you just trying to piss us off by saying strength the schedule over and over again? Somebody hasn't listened too much to Cowherd. Actually, really, the 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 repeating the strength of schedule, of course, was was more of the whole emphasizing lunacy. Um, so yeah, I guess it was a little bit meant to to get annoying. <laughs> Uh, the response to that, are you listening to, Cow <laughs> to Coward again? Bro's like, I don't listen to him. Wake says nobody should. Nice. Disqualified Williams. Come on, guys. A game that's this close, you can't afford to waste possessions. <laughs> it's okay to hit four people, but it's that fifth dude. You hit that fifth dude, you're gone. He gets out to about the 35-yard line. It's closer than I thought. Thought by now it'd be a blowout. I do think things are going to fall into place for, for the committee. They always seem to. Um, I mean, the BCS, there was, there, there rarely was colossal controversy. There rarely was. You know, everything always seemed to fall in place for them in the end. Uh, I do think Alabama, Alabama – I tell you what, if Alabama does not beat Florida, oh, my God. That should be just a stain on all of the SEC at that point in time. I think USC is going to beat Stanford. I think USC is going to beat Stanford, and that's basically going to end. That should end all arguments. Um, should, but it won't. Makes it out to maybe the 40-yard line. <laughs> resident <laughs> Auburn fan, <laughs> don't <laughs> don't football and jinx it. Nice, yeah, I know. Every time, every time I say Auburn's going to do this, Auburn's going to do that, I start telling you know saying that the teams are just going to crush it. They wind up tripping and falling on their face. It does happen. I know. 
I love it. You know, it's just like Monday night. I don't know if anybody watched the Monday night game, Cleveland versus Baltimore. <laughs> I don't think much many people watched it, but at the end of the game, dude's sitting there. I watched it because there was a lot of money that was going to um, not go my way, depending on the end of the game. Dude lines up for a field goal to win it. Tied up. Cleveland lines up for a field goal to win it. And the announcer's like, he's made 18 for 18. The is, you know, the only person, first person in the NFL to do this, you know, you know, his first 18 kicks are made, yada, yada. Of course, sure enough, block, taken back for a touchdown. Oh, uh, Duke, nice tackle. Brought down Jeremy Johnson. Yeah, I love how I love how Duke came back. There was talk about him going this year, but he came back just to get kicked off the team. Love it. Way to clinch your stock there. Dippy. Duke again. He's pushed out of bounds. At about the 19. I tell you what, in the virtual world, he's gonna be he, he'll be a first round draft pick. What else we got here? So, here's a, here's a question to Twitter talk. Okay, so Big Ten champion goes. Oklahoma's in, Big 12 champion. SEC champion goes. So, it's three spots. The last two are left. Pac-12... Arizona championship or somebody who did not win their conference the way I look at it and yes in this season I have defended Duke and have defended UNC and have sort of defended Clemson so the Wolfback Club is actually at this point in time probably sending a cease and desist order to me and told me I'm no longer welcome on, on NC State campus do you think Alabama wins or whatever? I think you know the SEC champion goes, Big Ten champion goes, Big 12 champion goes. You have Pac-12, USC ups, USC beats Stanford. I don't call it that an upset. I think USC is going to beat Stanford anyways. USC beats Stanford. Do you think, because I think this, do you think the ACC champion, no matter who it is, should automatically go? Your chances of winning decrease exponentially. Yeah, it happened in the LSU Ole Miss game. I didn't watch the end of that game. That is funny, though. Love it. Bro, Iowa will win and go to the college football playoff because Clemson will lose to UNC, Iowa, Florida, Oklahoma. Nice. Well, Iowa, if Iowa wins, I'm telling you, the winner, the winner of the Big Ten championship is in regardless. They're in regardless. You're not going to hold out an undefeated Iowa team, and you're not going to hold out a one-loss Michigan State team. A resident Auburn fan. I'd like to see Clemson and Iowa in the national championship game. Oh, my God. You want to bring down the NCAA, you, don't you? You want to automatically for them to lose all the money in the world. That will be the least profitable game ever. Ever. And I do mean ever, 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 ever. I mean, that year that Utah played Arizona in March Madness in the championship game. Or, sorry, not, not, not Arizona. They played uh, Kentucky. My bad. And I don't even know what the ratings were, but I guarantee it was basically all Kentucky fans because everybody else could care absolutely less. I think it wound up being like a 20-point blowout, too. I don't remember. I was actually working during that game, which really is annoying. He's taken down at the 43. Very solid gain through the air. 
I'm impressed with the poise of this quarterback. Wake, if Carolina gets to the college football playoffs, the committee is a joke. Even if they beat Clemson. Wow. They run it for the first and he stops. Auburn versus Alabama in the national championship. That's from our resident Auburn fan. <laughs> you would like that. Like to see Clemson, TCU, and LSU. That's lunatics. So, wait, where does all this hatred come from? I mean, no, I don't. <laughs> Trust me, as a Wolfpack fan, um, I understand where the hatred comes from. Are you basing it on the fact that they their their their, their schedule with the FCS opponents, with two FCS opponents? Is that is that why you're saying they'd be a joke? They get this one off, and it's a beauty. And it goes into the end zone, down for a touchback. Dude, forget that. I want to see Memphis versus Temple in a rematch for the national championship. Leadership. You, you hit the nail right I'm right. curious, Wake. I, I, I want to know your your basis. I, I don't care because the whole point is I don't care if the team, like talent wise, blows monkey balls. I really don't. If you've put together an undefeated or a one loss season and you've won a conference championship and everybody else has like two losses, I'm putting you in. I mean, to me, it, to me, if we're just looking at talent-wise, we shouldn't even play. You know, we shouldn't even play. I mean, talent-wise, how many people had Clemson as, as as a top as a top five team or a top four team? I mean, Ohio State actually played the season like they didn't need to play, and they just automatically, because of the great talent that they have, be put in the Final Four. Anyways, I'm just curious. No argument here. Just. I, I'm curious to see what exactly is go what what's going on here. And sit down on the couch, take notes, figure out where the straight stigmatism is coming from. UAB versus versus Georgia State in the national championship. Exactly. Lunatic, South Carolina versus Temple, LSU versus TCU. Actually, our final four. Our final four should be nothing but three-letter teams. So USC versus TCU, LSU versus SMU. Boom. Or UCF even. Just drop the mic and walk away. There it is. You save ink from not putting all those letters. You city in the stadium for not having to light up those letters. Boom. People don't have to sit there and wonder what the hell the 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 initials stand for. They know already. Versus Nickel State. <laughs> Let them play. Nice. Actually, you're a resident Auburn fan. No, it's not. App State is a regular. And you can tell by the reactions of the defensive players. Oh, I'm sorry. I may have switched that. App State is in the Southern Belt now. Sun Belt. Southern Belt. Whatever. Sun Belt. Southern Belt. And we welcome you back to the action here. Just about set for the second half. Jones back to return. From his own goal line. He's tackled at the 18 yard line. The Tigers continue to get it done on the defensive. Dude, I live in North Carolina. I, <laughs> I, root, I root for App State. I was happy when they made it up to FBS. Trust me, I sort of know this one. Them and Georgia Southern are now in the, are, are now in the Sun Belt and absolutely love the fact. I love Georgia Southern. I love App State. I think, that, I, I think they're great teams. I mean, they're not going to be. Mixing it up with the big boys, but they can definitely beat the mid-tier teams. I can tell you that right now. Grabs a pitch, looking for the corner. He's to the forty. 
Yeah, I mean, App State beat Michigan there. Like, ah, you know what? Screw it. We're going up to the big boys now. We can beat the Big Ten. told us earlier this week they're going to do everything they can to get this receiver involved in the game plan, whether it means catching a ball or at times running the football. And there, he shows what he can do with the football in his hand. But he didn't have much of a chance on that play. Boy, this defense has a lot of speed. They're all over him by the time he caught the ball. Yes, my resident Auburn fan. Yes, there are there are dudes like Nichols State and Jacksonville State that we just threw in there just to be um, way too funny. We're not funny. We must have missed the mark. Oh, lunatic! The final four based on uniforms. Let's see what his final four are. TCU versus LSU, Baylor versus any other cool uniform team. Hmm. Right now he wants to get this kick away and change field position. Booming kick. This punt bounces <laughs> into the end zone and this will be a touchback. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see how the action shakes out in this series. All right, my resident Auburn fan and my wannabe resident Auburn fan. We all make little brain twitches and our synapses fire differently. It happens. Up until this year in the playoffs, if you would have told me the Houston Astros were in the American League, I'd have told you you were full of it. Because it wasn't until we were, I was talking about the playoffs to somebody and somebody started talking about how the Kansas, Kansas City Royals were going to play the Astros. I sat back and thought, what? And it wasn't until I actually saw highlights that it truly dawned on me that the Astros were now in the American League. It does happen. Things that we've known for years... The Wildcats change, their key guys and then we forget about it. It happens. I don't think he's going to play any more football today. He makes it out does anyone else hate this? Is from Bro. Does anybody else hate when two teams wear the the home uniforms at the same time? It annoys me badly, considering I play baseball and our uniforms ha have to be perfect most of the time. Um. Down two possessions. This offense. I like the USC UCLA wearing home uniforms. I liked the ACC championship where Georgia Tech wore their blues. Now, technically, their whites are, are their are their home uniforms, and Florida State wore their reds. Um, Chick Fil A Classic. They started doing that. Both teams wearing their dark uniforms. On the line. I'm okay with that. I like it. If, it. if you want to start tradition, I'm okay with that. I don't want to see it all over the place. I want to see darks. I want to see lights. Um, in fact, I don't want to see lights. I want to actually see white. Um, it's one of those things like um, the yellows don't work for me. You know, that brings up basketball. I'm all right with the yellows in basketball as as your as your lights, but yeah. He puts it away, and it's a great kick. Bro, it looks super ugly. So God, I'm not gonna argue with that. Be a but ugly is okay. It's a new I mean, I am sure one of these. I am sure if you haven't one of these days at a party or at a bar, you're going to look at one of your friends and say, "Ugly is okay." One of these days. And if you haven't, you just haven't lived long enough. Eventually, that will come out of your mouth. Don't worry about it. I've got 18 billion other things that I want to say, but like that's going down a bad slope. Because there's something my brother said that I'd love to share. But anyways. Bro, I hate it. Uh, I hate it. It's ugly, untraditional, and I don't agree a lot. So they mismatch terribly. They don't have to match up, but purple can't face yellow. It, and that's, and that's what I'm saying. The, the cases that I brought up are 
you know, blue and red. Whether it's baby blue from UCLA and red, you know, the darker, darker red of USC, Florida State in red, Georgia Tech and navy blue. Um, the Chick Fil A Classic, in which NC State wore red and Tennessee wore orange, was just horrific. Who agrees LSU's uniforms except their normal white ones look terrible? I like the purple. I like the purple and yellow. I like the creamsicle look from, ten from, from Tampa Bay. And I, I like the neon green when the Seahawks wear it. I don't know. I like these kind of annoying uniforms. I am an annoying uniform type of guy. Love it. Most people will not see eye to eye to me with, with, with uniforms. I absolutely love bright, annoying uniforms. It is what it is, man. And I'm okay. You know, I'm not. I'm okay with people bucking tradition. I'm okay with it. Brought down at the 27 yard line. Right, there's a lot of traditions we changed, and it looks just fine. And we've done just fine. <laughs> President Auburn band. Auburn in their crimson. Or uh, Bama and their crimson, Auburn and their navy. That would look weird. <laughs> that would actually look weird. That would look weird just because of tradition on the eyeball. <laughs> it would look weird. Because the other thing is, I mean, Alabama, especially if they're playing under the lights, Alabama looks damn dark under the lights. In the sun, they look red, but in, in under the lights, because because it's you know because it's crimson. And I've been to a Penn State Alabama game, and Alabama was just, yeah, it was dark. Kicks away, and it's off the upright, and it's good. They got a little bit of pain on the ball after that kick. Bro, the only untraditionalist I can stand when it comes from come to uniforms is Oregon. I love their uniforms. Oregon suits are amazing. That's from Lunatic. Oh, Oregon's great. Um, and Baylor's got some good good unis. I, and y'all going to jump on me for this. I love Maryland's flag uniforms. Absolutely love it. Split down the center. Mostly red, but split down the center. So one half of the flag's on the right side. One half of the flag's on the left side. Love it. Absolutely love it. The offense will be hoping for a little more success than they had the last time out. If they're going to make a comeback in this game, it's going to have to start. Alabama versus Oregon color rush cool. uniforms. Oh, my God. So, Bills fan. I'm a Bills fan. I sat there watching Thursday night during the color rush. You know, Buffalo in all bright red, Jets in bright green. And I'm just sitting there. I, I'm just sitting there in awe and, and, and laughing because, you know, you should be. Putting Christmas trees up somewhere, running Christmas tree lights around the field, putting tinsel on this goalpost. I mean, this is what you should be doing. Doesn't dawn on me till the game, until after the game, when they when, when I read an article about how that game drove colorblind people nuts, and I just I started rolling because it not, not because it, drew, it it did something to colorblind people, just because I love those instances in which you put something together you think is just freaking great and you've overlooked the detail like oh i don't know colorblind people will just see gray versus gray and not be able to watch the game will not know who the hell's who he makes it out to maybe the 43 yard line nice yardage so yes the auburn georgia and uh, an alabama oregon color rush game probably will do the same thing although you know the only thing that you can do to oregon to make them color rush is to actually Make their uniforms light up. I mean, seriously, that that would be the only way you could make a color rush Oregon. Is just to have Oregon come onto the field, glowing of some kind of neon green. Which actually, that's probably Oregon's next step. They probably, they probably have a whole little development team right now, trying to figure out how they can still be within the rules and have their uniforms light up. And he tacks on the extra point. 
Bro, I kind of like the Maryland Unis. Unis, kind of. Good. That most people hate them. Auburn lines up for the kickoff. He's to the 20. He makes it out to maybe the 23 yard line. Yeah, most people just completely hate Maryland uniforms. I, I normally get a, a decisive, angrily worded comment back at me when I like the Maryland uniforms, but the uniforms that need some good tweaking or complete overhaul has always been Indiana because Indiana always just steals designs from other people and slaps the eye somewhere on it I think they need to be a little inventive instead of like seeing another team being like yeah we want to look like them like especially the, the mimicked Oklahoma uniforms I don't know who did that but they need to be fired. You ain't Oklahoma. Don't even look like you're Oklahoma. What they should have done, I don't know if they've ever do, done this, what they should have done, if they were going to mimic something, mimic their basketball team. And make the, the candy stripes from, from the old days. Or the 70s. That would have been cool. Bro, what do you think about Auburn's white under the under the lights? They're bright. They are bright white. That's for damn sure. They are bright. And I, and, you know, here's the thing. The problem nowadays is the fact that hopefully the traditions stay. I like the traditional Penn State. I like the Michigan traditional maize and blue. It, you know, the white pants just do not do it for me. I like Ohio State's uniform, traditional. I like USC's traditional uniforms. I like UCLA's traditional uniforms. I like Auburn's and Alabama's and LSU's traditional uniforms. I hope they don't get stupid. I, you know, Oregon and Baylor just having some fun with their uniforms. Maryland having fun with their uniforms. That's cool. Because I don't see them as I I never have seen them as some kind of traditional game. Now I did like Oregon's old uniforms just because they were different. I love that I love Donald Duck on the side being all pissed off. That was great. And I liked them because they were different. They didn't have some variation of red and some variation of their letter on the side of their helmet. They were green and yellow with a pissed off Donald Duck. On their on their helmet. Awesome. This is the ninth play of this drive. Um. He's taken down at the two yard line. I have no idea what's going on in the Twitch chat. They're crowding that line of scrimmage. Love Oregon State's unity. Yeah, I, uh, uh. When you're that close to the end zone, it's always a smart play to find your blockers. And Auburn doesn't have enough hidden colors in their in their logo for, for other uniforms. Do they could, dude? Are you kidding me? Auburn could come out in bright orange. Auburn could go black. Because everybody else can go black. Auburn, Auburn could do some funky stuff. I mean, really, Auburn can do. Everything that the Denver Broncos do. Both teams are well aware that a score on this drive is. I love the Oregon. Oh, I love Oregon State's unis. Oregon State. I'm not too into the 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 the, the black plane helmet. I'm not into the black plane helmet. Um, I do like me some orange and black. And I tell you what, speaking of orange and black. I think we've we've had this discussion before about five wide receivers in the formation. Um we we've had this discussion about the fact that Oregon State and Oklahoma State, orange and black, who the hell decided that OSU could just keep both orange and blacks and drive people nuts. 
The uniform I really, really like with Oklahoma State is that 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 silver. Whether it's whether the the you know it's that grayish silver main uniform with the orange lining, or it's orange with the silver lining. I still orange and silver. I think Oklahoma should, Oklahoma State should stick with. I think that actually is the color variation that. Stick with. I like orange and black. I think orange and black is cool as hell together. I'd love to wear it as a uniform. But just let the Beavers handle it from here on out. You stick with an orange and silver. People don't. Teams, you know, that is definitely steps you out from everybody else. Is that or, is an orange and silver uniform. And I like it. BCU uniforms. No idea. Oh, BC. Well. So Lunatic said BC uniforms. Let's say UCLA. Okay. I like UCLA. In fact, actually, the Pac-12. The Pac-12 has got some good unis in it. I mean, good different unis. Yeah, Washington State with it with the um, with the silver and red. And then you know they, they do have a gray variation. You have you have Washington with with a golden and and uh, the dark purple, light purple. They do variations of purple all the time. Loved Arizona State's old unis. Um, not really too into the into their black unis. Um, I like the I like the red and maroon better. I like how the pack the Pac-12 has differences. Definitely have differences, and I like the Pac-12 unis. They do a good job at, at, at the whole, you know, oh, I don't know, uh, making, you know, having three different teams, Bulldogs, and most teams some variations of, of red or dark red. And Sorry, I'm texting. Completely forgot I was on it. Uh, neon orange and black unis in Oregon. Neon yellow. Oh, Jesus. Okay, this is good. This is good. <laughs> this is good. So, a resident Auburn fan. Neon orange and black unis of Oregon State. Oregon neon yellow unis on Eastern Washington's field. There you go. It was, I mean, it was bad enough with, with um, Eastern Washington red and and the neon yellow unis on, on Eastern Washington fields. That that was bad. Let's talk Washington State losing to Portland State. To being, uh, to being ranked, mm, it happens. Look, you can. Here's the thing about early losses. I don't blame anybody for losing early. You don't have your team right. I don't blame. Them. You know, as long as you come on strong in the end. It it as long as you come on strong in the end, I'm okay with you being ranked. I'm okay with you you getting some notoriety. They came on strong in the end. They got it together. It's just one loss. Hell, the year Michigan lost to App State. What they finish? Did they finish third or something like? Or they finished high. I remember that. Possessions giving them some confidence, but let's see if that carries them back down the field. <laughs> Snug, I'm back in that score should not be right. <laughs> oh, Alabama fan to the end. It's second and ten. Ball on the 44. Auburn up big. And he 
just gets rid of it. Even though they didn't sack him, the pressure was still enough to force a bad pass. If you can get in there and disrupt the pocket, then the quarterback is going to have a tougher time getting the ball to his playmakers. Slings it out there incomplete. You know, Brad, this is one of those plays where the quarterback just wants to apologize. Bro's having issues. It happens, really? It happens? Bro, of course it happens. You know that. Forget about it. Let's move on to the next play. And he makes it out to about the 27-yard line. Arizona's are really used to having everything go their way on offense, and that hasn't been the case today. Hasn't been the case. <laughs> you know, the offensive coordinator, I think, may have looked at this game. Oh, here we go. No problem. Just show Roll up. Tide and War Eagle now are, are taking yeah, over the Twitch. Why it's important to take every single opponent seriously. Can't we all just get along, man? And he's tackled at the 43. Two, we got Ohio State and TCU coming up after this. Auburn's going for the national championship here in, in our 32 team playoff. See who they play. I'm assuming they're going to play Ohio State. Ohio State should probably win. Of course, the national championship will be on Monday when we come back after the weekend. Uh, and Monday, you will guys will get to decide. Ch National Championship will be our second game. That is our primetime spot. Our third game, we will basically have sort of nothing. Um, so it will be your decision on Monday whether we go back and finish up with another Road to Glory game and watch UCLA once again lose. Or we can have a, third ver a three versus four consolation game. So Arizona would be in the consolation game. I don't know who, who would, you know, they'll probably face TCU. He's going to try and scramble. Quarterback's going to run it, and he's got room to work. And he's taken down right around the 18-yard line. Just gets rid of it. Good job here by the defense. If you let this quarterback set and throw, he'll kill you all game. But they got excellent pressure on that play. And this play is number eight on the drive. Well, as they take a look at that injury on the sideline, let's see what this backup can do at quarterback. Short over the middle. And they make the stop around the seven-yard line. That's good for a gain of 11 yards. NC State came from game three. Yeah, I don't know about that. Don't need an NC State game. Oh, look at that touchdown. They cut it to within 20. So they go to the air and they come away with six, Kirk. And Brad, I got to tell you, that's not an easy thing to do there. The defenses nowadays are so tough when you get inside the red zone. He splits the uprights with the extra point. So, all right. So the NC, uh, we're getting, we got to get back to this. Resident Auburn fan, I think, was the first one who brought it up. This whole claim six national cha championships for Auburn, the 2004 national championship, or something like that. Why again can somebody claim that that, that championship? I'm not quite sure. So it's second and 12. Ball on the 43. Hey, check 
I, I am. He's taken down behind the line. Should do an SMU dynasty for off season. <laughs> Have you guys voted for NCAA on the Xbox One yet? You know, I, yeah, I probably should. I, I obviously don't have one, but you know. Um, I, I'm still extremely curious about how they're how they can legally he's under pressure gets it out to his receiver how they can legally backwards compatible the NCAA 14 and um charge for it because the settlements have been done on the 360 platform and if let's put it this way if they can make it backwards compatible on a new platform i think it sort of shows the fact that ea didn't drop ncaa because of the lawsuit they i, I mean i've always contended they dropped it ncaa because the lawsuit gave them an excuse and if they can bring back com backwards compatibility on a different platform and sell new on a different platform um, Looks like they're ready for the kick. He just drills this one. That, it, 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 to me, it just it, it drives huge holes through, through that. Across the 30. The 50. He's knocked out of bounds at the 50-yard line. Well, Kirk, I guess you can say this. If you like offense, it's been entertaining. Well, don't get me wrong. I, I love their power, but I just wish it was a closer game, more competitive here in the fourth quarter. We're late in the fourth quarter. This game has been a blowout for quite some time. And I love, I absolutely love when fans bring up how many championships the team has won. And the only thing that I have to say, this is right at you, Snug. Zips it to his receiver. Touchdown. It doesn't matter. There's one defending national champ, and there will only be one champ at the end of the season. That's the only thing you get a chance to brag about. It's great to bring up history, sit back and enjoy life, you know, about the good old days. But there's only one bragging rights. And it starts after the championship and ends when you're 10. <laughs> Auburn's going to take this back. This is awesome. And some of the players are looking back because we have a penalty on the play. Yeah, bro, this is sort of what I'm talking about. You, you said USC, you know, USC was stripped of the national title in 2004. Why could Auburn claim it? I mean, Auburn I finished the season like... I don't even think Auburn finished in the season in the top 10. It's about attitude and playing with a lot of confidence. Second down, and they're going to need about three yards to pick up the first down. Or did they? Oh, no shit. They went 13-0. and 0. Oh, yeah, but and this one's all but wrapped up with the final score: Auburn forty-eight, Arizona twenty. Okay, yeah, they did. They finished undefeated, but they were suspended. Well played game for the most part. Right, they're going through sanctions. Opportunities in this game, and I think if they could have capitalized on a few of them, it would have been a lot closer. Because Utah also finished the season undefeated. I have forgotten. I had completely forgotten, and they did get first place votes. You're right. You are completely right. All right, let's go through the stats. I completely forgot all that, that was that year. I guess you weren't in sanctions. What year did you guys, was it 2003 then, that you guys were, were under sanctions and went undefeated? Uh, 
All right, let's go through this, do, through the uh, st and the, the the stats here. Completely forgot that Auburn went undefeated that year. I thought that was the year that they they went undefeated and were insane. Or I thought that was the year that they got rocked, and I thought the next year they were on sanctions or something like that. Cause that was um. Oh God, that was that dude's first year. Year there in sanction. Ah, crap. I'm trying to think. I can't. I can see his face. Bowden. There we go. Life all runs together. Peyton Barber, 182 yards, three touchdowns. Beautiful. Duke, duking it out. All right, boys and girls, we... Once again, forgot to hit capture. What the hell is going on with me? God, I really hope this this damn thing uploads to, to Twitch. Why am I forgetting to hit capture? My head is just not in the game right now. I don't understand what's going on. I keep on forgetting to hit capture. Son of a pup. I really hope this damn thing gets, gets online so I can grab it. <laughs> 